about to call the call the order. Right now, we're going to start the open ceremony. Um, we have the invocation by Mr. Benson. We stand. Lord, guide us as we convene today to act with wisdom and dedication. Inspire us to meet each challenge and to choose the path of righteous man. Amen. Mr. Osbury. Mr. Benson. Present. Mr. <coughs> Freeman. Present. Mr. Guillory. Present. Ms. Jackson. Present. Mr. Riche. Mr. Sam. Mr. Selders. Present. Mr. Taylor. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Right now, the floor, the floor is open for public comment on any agenda item. Does anyone present, anybody want to present anything, any comments? Open to the public? Okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how are y'all? Uh, Trey Welch, I, I'm not, this is my first meeting, uh, attending y'all's board meeting. Um, I wanted to, there was something that was a little irregular that was put on uh, the council agenda the other night about the Mid-Size City Conference that was coming to Baker and Zachary. One of the questions that had come out, the reason it was done the way, I just wanted to give you all some background on why it was done the way it was done, was that originally the Mid-Size City Conference, which I don't know if you all have any, uh, know what the Mid-Size City Conference is, but basically all the Mid-Size Cities all around the state of Louisiana come in and they have host cities. This, uh, this um, meeting is gonna be hosted by Baker, Zachary, and Central conjunct uh, uh, together. So anyway, what happened was is that originally it was supposed to be held at the Baker Municipal Center. The Baker Municipal Center had its roof blown off during Isaac. So there wasn't able to do a, um, they weren't able to have it there. So they came to me and they said, well, Zachary's ordinance, I mean not Zachary's, East Baton Rouge Parish's ordinance, alcohol ordinance, you have to waive it but the way in which it came about was it was it needed to be waived because it was the first meeting was going to be Baker it was going to be the parish council and then y'all's meeting but it was never meant to usurp this board's power or anything else like that it was just the way in which it fell and the way the meetings fell was the reason it was done the way it was done so um, and I've talked with the mayors um, I know that it was just a provision of the alcohol, but it wasn't just alcohol. I mean, it, it was just beer and wine, and it was for all the elected officials and their delegation from the different cities throughout the uh, throughout all the state. So I, I hope that y'all would look favorably upon letting them do that because I did get word late this afternoon that there's no way that the Baker Municipal Center would be done in time to be able to have that. So, And, and also while we're here, we also have... Uh, Fest, I'd like, and I think that's in front of y'all. We did that the right way, so thank y'all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Any other um, public comments? Okay, now we're moving to approve the um, the minutes. And I need a motion. I move to approve, to approve the, the minutes for the commission meeting of August 22nd, 2012. Okay, we have a motion, and we have a second, and a Mr. Freeman second. Any opposed? No opposition. We approve the minutes. Okay. My guess. All right. Next. Hmm? Okay. Next thing we have is the consent calendar. Um, you have any any commissioners want to remove anything from the consent calendar? Okay. If not, then I need a motion. Mr. Guillory moved. Mr. Benson seconded. So we approve the consent calendar. Okay. Anybody opposed? No opposition. So that we move. Um, next is the presentation. Uh, Ms. Superintendent. Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, 
four employees uh, we would like to recognize for their service to this parish. And as I call your name, please come forward to receive your uh, token of, of recognition for your service to East Mount Rouge Parish Recreation. first person is Brett Wallace, and he is with the Planning and Engineering Unit. He's been with Breck for five years. Uh, he's done an outstanding job, and we are hoping that we have another five years plus with you. And please accept this token of our appreciation for your service to this parish. regarding our new member orientation, so I know she's involved in making sure we get the right people on board on time and make sure that they get oriented the right way. So thank you for what you do for Brett. Appreciate you. The next person is a very important person to me, uh, and it's very difficult for me to do my job without him. Uh, Mr. Dale Ozing, would you please come forward? I definitely want to give you this 10-year pin recognize your service to this, this parish. Thank you for what you do and your leadership that you provide to your team. And we look forward to many more years of service on what you can do for us. Thank you. Okay, now it's time for the break. Okay, now it's time for the break video. Breck is looking forward to a busy October. Blue Bonnet Swamp hosts haunted hikes on October 12th, 19th, and 26th. This program is an alternative to commercial haunted houses. Participants will learn about snakes, insects, rats, and other creepy critters as they stop at educational stations along the trail. Students should bring a flashlight and are welcome to come in costume if they choose. All children must be accompanied by an adult, and the fun begins at 7.30 p.m. The fee is $6 per person. For more information, call 757-8905. The Baton Rouge Zoo invites the entire family to boo at the zoo, a merry, not scary, trick-or-treating extravaganza. Participants should wear their best costumes and visit the zoo on October 20th, 21st, 27th, and 28th. Children can visit treat stations throughout the zoo, take a snapshot at the Safari Snapshot photo booth, and wander through the Barry Not Scary hay maze and boot in. Regular zoo admission applies. For more information, call 775-3877 or visit brzoo.org. The second annual Art in the Park will be held on October 20th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Renowned gallery artists will demonstrate their techniques of painting, sculpting, pottery creation, and printmaking to the public. Children will be treated to art activities and a sidewalk chalk drawing contest complete with prizes. Visitors can stroll through the scenic grounds of City Park and observe area artists painting and creating artwork, view some improvisation theater, listen to local school bands and musicians, and simply enjoy the creative atmosphere that abounds. This event is free and open to all ages. Call 383-1470 for more information. Breckaboo Halloween events are back. Have loads of frightening fun in North Sherwood Forest Community Park on October 26th and Greenwood Community Park on October 30th. The haunting excitement consists of carnival games, ghostly visitors, costume contests, haunted house, inflatables, and much more. Both events are from 6 to 8 p.m. and open to the public. Call the location of your choice for more details. 
North Sherwood Forest at 275-0568, and Greenwood at 620-0500. Come trick-or-treat with Man's Best Friend at Raising Cane's Dog Park at Forest Community Park on October 26th. Booths from local pet organizations, a Best Dog Costume Contest, and Halloween Atmosphere take over the park during this furry event. The fun starts at 6 p.m. and is free to the public. Call 272-9200, extension 570, for more information. The Spooky Spectrum returns to Highland Road Park Observatory on October 27th from 7 to 11 p.m. Come visit, if you dare, as HRPO's 6th Annual Family Friendly Tribute to the Bizarre and Freakish takes place. Participants will delve into the eerie side of astronomy, physics, and aeronautics with creepy science demonstrations, some never used before. Patrons will also enjoy stories, strange sky phenomena, extra dimensions, and extraterrestrials. Admission is free and open to all ages. Call 768-9948 for more information. Breck's Howell Ween Scramble takes place at Howell Park Golf Course on October 27th at 8 a.m. The entry fee is $60 per two-man team and includes prizes, green fees, cart, the closest of the pin contest, and food and drink at the conclusion of play. Participants may sign up at any Breck Golf Course and all fees must be paid upon entry. Call the Howell Park Pro Shop at 357-9292 for more information. Don't forget, National Visit a Park Day is on October 5th, so turn off the TV and head outside for some fun in the sun. Plus, the Greater Baton Rouge State Fair returns to Airline Highway Park from October 25th to November 4th. Visit us at breck.org, then like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and watch us on YouTube for more information and events. And remember, it all starts at Breck. Consideration under the uh, administrative matters. Uh, item A is to seek your authorization to accept an $85,000 settlement uh, regarding the site design group and Breck at Park Perkins Road improvement. Uh, there was an issue with the uh, drainage under the bowls at the uh, park, and this is a way for us to uh, move forward based on the legal counsel that we received make sure that we proceed with the settlement and um, move this item on and, and resolve it. So this is a recommendation uh, for your approval. I move that you second. Okay. Move and Mr. Second. 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 <coughs> All right, we are done. Any opposed? No, for, no, no opposition. Okay, the second item is a res resolution asking uh, your permission um, uh, to approve the uh, mid-sized city conference hosting committee allow for beer and wine uh, at the uh, Greenwood uh, Park Theater building. Uh, Mr. Uh, Trey Welch mentioned that during his uh, speaker's comments to you. Uh, they had initially requested beer, wine, and liquor, but our recommendation is beer and wine only. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Denson moved and uh, Mr. Freeman seconded and we're going to adopt it. Beer and wine only. We have any opposition? So no opposition. Okay. Uh, the next item is under the uh, commu communications area for the superintendent. And I wanted to take a special uh, privilege uh, at this point to uh, give special recognition and I would like to ask you all to stand. Uh, these are junior and seniors, if I have the grade levels correct, of students from Southern University here tonight. They're here, they're therapeutic recreation and leisure service uh, study students. They're planning on careers in parks and recreation management. And their professor is here with them. She brought them here, Dr. Jones, if you would stay in. And the students are Marvin Stevens, Jasmine Mills, Hesha Whitaker, Nancy Burks, Ariel Whitney, and Leland McCree. Thank you all for coming. They're here to see how government works in the public, private, the public park and recreation profession. So thank you all for being here. And we appreciate you, your interest in Breck. And we wish you the best in your studies and in your career. And remember, it all does start at Breck. <laughs> and uh, don't let this be an example. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the chair. 
<laughs> yeah, don't 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 hold us against this. Don't hold this against us because this is my first time ever chairing a meeting. And so it's not gonna be as smooth as uh Mr. Riche usually does it. And so just bear with us, please. The next item on your agenda is the uh, Breck Foundation quarterly report, and Carl Stages has agreed to provide a quarterly update with you, and he's here this evening. Thank you, Carl. On behalf of President Hal Budd and Commissioner Jackson, who serves as our liaison, and the Board of Directors, I want to thank you for the opportunity to present this third quarter report to the Commission. Last night, the Breck Foundation celebrated its 10th anniversary. We reviewed many of the projects that have been accomplished over the last decade and the public-private partnerships that have been created. From neighborhood parks such as Goodwood and Leeward to amenities at community parks such as the Raising Cane's Dog Parks, the Foundation has played a role in enhancing Breck facilities. Through funding for programs such as the First Tee and in recreational activities for seniors at Alson, we have assisted in the core mission of this agency. In fact, through last month, nearly $185,000 has been provided by the foundation already this year. When you look back over the last 10 years, nearly $3 million has been donated to the foundation, while over 1,500,000 has flowed to BREC with the remaining restricted funds scheduled for distribution as benchmarks are met. Recently, nearly a year's worth of initial work paid off when the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana Foundation awarded the foundation a $1 million grant. The Capital Area Pathway Project and the Mobile Recreation Unit affords new opportunities and collaborations that will move Breck forward in providing cutting edge park and recreation facilities and services. Also, initiatives are being finalized that will bring new alliances. The Foundation has created a community award which will annually honor an individual, business, or organization that has had a tremendous impact on BREC and our quality of life. The LEAF, Leadership, Excellence, Activism, and Fellowship Award recipient is presented with a $1,000 stipend to designate to a BREC program or project. The first recipient of the award, Sue Turner, was honored yesterday in recognition of her years of dedicated service to enhance the park system as a committee member and for her preservation and acquisition efforts, leadership through example, and work with diverse individuals and groups. In addition, Sue is a founding member of the Breck Foundation and served as a past officer and board member, is chair of the Community Advisory Committee, and continues to advise on projects. Once again, thank you for this chance to update you on our work. Thank you, Carl. Uh, last night was an incredible event. We had people from all over Baton Rouge, people who are very supportive of BREC, and they're interested in, in making real big, bold, bold moves to help us move this agency forward. Uh, and I'm excited about the future of where we're headed. And, and, and for the students in Parks and Recreation, uh, having a foundation is a real blessing and a very good thing to have in your corner when you're talking about fundraising and getting partners and making sure that you're able to provide programs and services and facilities because tax dollars don't cover it all. So thank you, Carl, for what you did. The next item is the uh, just an update to the commissioners regarding the uh, golf uh, PGA tours. Uh, we had an opportunity to tour all of our various golf courses over the past two or three weeks or so with members from the PGA. They came in to help us with golf, golf development to increase players at our golf courses. And they're supposed to submit a report to me back in the next week or two with recommendations on some of the different programs and things that we could do to help provide additional training programs, to provide promotional opportunities to increase players uh, because the PGA recognized several years ago th the golf industry was in a decline and they needed to do something very quickly to bring it, bring it back and, and they're moving around the country and they came here 
and they're providing this service to us at no cost to the taxpaying public. And I think that's a huge statement that needs to be clear and, and everybody needs to know that we found a resource to help us and we will utilize that resource and take those recommendations and help make our program stronger. And that, that's where we are at this point. The last item on our agenda, this is something that I know that uh, it will fit into just about everything we're doing. I asked Ted to bring forward uh, and introduce to many of you uh, the information about our strategic planning process. Ms. Jackson was the only commissioner, I believe, in, in, in the commission when we did the first strategic plan back in 2004 or thereabouts. And so I wanted to give him an opportunity to at least introduce it and then talk about the direction we take from here. Good evening, commissioners. We have uh, some exciting times coming for Breck, and I'm here to tell you a bit about it. Breck's 10-year strategic plan is eight years old and Breck will begin work soon on a new strategic plan. We are excited about all the new things such as the community parks, Liberty Lagoon, and improved day camps that have been happening at Breck since the 2004 Mar Imagine Your Park strategic plan created a roadmap for us to follow. IYP, as we've called it, has been the tool that has helped us adapt to the change, have been able to refocus, become more efficient, and improve parks and recreation services for the entire parish. But the price process is cyclical, and there's always more work to be done. BREC is beginning to gather some of the base information that will be needed for the creation of our next strategic plan. And around April of next year, we will begin the public phase of planning. All of you will have an important role in that process. The strategic plan is a time for the community to dream about the future, to set priorities and update our roadmap so that we can continue to improve and adapt to the changing times. Some great things come out of, came out of the last strategic plan. Someone told us about dog parks. What an odd, odd idea that seemed. But it did not take long for dog parks to put their print on our system and become a great amenity for the community. What new things will we uncover in this strategic plan? With the next strategic plan, we will again focus and make sure we are targeted in on what the community wants us to do so that we can provide the greatest value for the people based on public input, thorough study, solid consensus, and best practices. REC is on a 10-year cycle for strategic planning. Additionally, our reaccreditation will come up in the same time frame. In 1994, BREC, along with three other agencies, became the first agency in the country to be accredited through the Commission for the Accreditation of Park and Recreation Agencies. Today, BREC is one of 109 park and recreation agencies in the country that have reached the high standards that accreditation signifies. Strategic planning is part of the accreditation standards. The strategic planning process is intensive. If I, in IYP, we had over 125 meetings with the public, special interest groups, all of our public officials, other planning organizations, school boards, and on and on. We will be doing that again. Compiling and making sense of all the information is a great effort. But as Booker T. Washington said, nothing ever comes to one that is worth having except as a result of hard work. So we are looking forward to working with the commission as we go through this process with our entire community. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, this completes the superintendent's communication report and uh, we'll bring back more information as we continue our process of planning. Thank you. Okay, next up is the standing committee reports um, and we have finance, Ms. Jackson. <coughs> All of you have received a copy of our financial statements. They're through August 31st of this year. I'm going to make it brief because a lot of times it's very redundant what I talk about, um, especially with the accruals. The general fund, most of our programming is through, um, the summer program is through at the end of August. Self-generated revenues right now for us are basically flat. We've received all of the, um, the ad valorem taxes that we're going to receive the cash from last year at this point in time. So we're in the cash position where we actually thought that we would be. The, um, again, this month, 
one of the contributing factors that helps the general fund to be so self-sustaining at this point in time is that the expenditures are down significantly. And the majority of that is due to um, attrition through salaries, which in turn, as you all know, saves your payroll and fringe costs as well. So um, all the departments are doing their due diligence to watch every penny that's being spent to make sure that it's spent accordingly. I'm just going to go briefly. The internal service funds, as you all know, we created that this year. It's been a great tool for us to be able to use, to be able to track our spending by the various funds and by the various line items for us to be able to see exactly what's being spent where. And um, all of the funds as of this point in time, with the exception of the print shop, is doing significantly well. So um, they're all building up a little reserve in those funds, which is what we were hoping that we would see. And um, as a matter of fact, uh, Bill Palmer stopped by my office after a Knock Knock Museum uh, this week, and uh, he was asking about those funds, and I told him that the um, Employee Benefit Fund actually had a little bit of a surplus that had been established. He said that was the first time he'd ever heard of that in Brex history, that we've actually building up a little surplus in that fund to help us to sustain for future years. So um, that concludes my report to you on the financials for uh, as of August. If any of you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those for you. I move the acceptance of her report. <coughs> We had two additional items that were added under our contracts and bids that needed to, um, that'll need your approval. Both are annual contracts, and one is for our ready mix contract, um, and that is going to be awarded to um, the Losey Brothers. And for the various line items that you see there on your agenda um, for the different uh, types of concrete that we're, we're requesting. The other is we're required on an annual basis to um, officially uh, bid out our official journal, who is going to be the, the entity that we utilize to publish all of our messages to the public. And the advocate was our only bidder. Um, and so therefore, we're awarding to the advocate. So those both of those two items. And those were taken unanimous. Uh, together in the Finance Committee. Any questions or comments? I move we accept this part of the <coughs> The other item that are on your agenda, it's under other business, and it'll be item one and three, and those are both um, dealing with our audit. An extensive report was provided to the Finance Committee. We had a very um, lengthy meeting, Freddie Smith with Provost, uh, with, um, um, Postal Weight in Netterville came to our meeting and gave a very in-depth report on all the various aspects of the audit. There were two findings. The resolution to those findings were presented to the committee at that time. The committee unanimously um, approved the report and the resolutions to those findings. And if anybody has any specific questions, I can take those and answer them for you. I need a motion to approve. Mr. Freeman, approve. And Mr. Willie, second. Any opposition? No opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Three. Three. I think there's one other item. Yeah, three. I did. I have yeah, one, one more. Yeah. Item. I did. I missed one. It's um, the item number three is actually the settlement of a, um, a lawsuit. Um, it's involving workers' comp. And it's um, $2,188 and this was, and some change, and this was recommended by our legal counsel. So we'll need to vote on that item. I need a motion to approve. Mr. Freeman, motion. Mr. Willie, second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Freeman, motion. Any opposition? No opposition. Thank you. Ms. Jackson, anything else you'd like to add? No, uh, oh, my uh, human resource board was on the consent panel. Next on the um, is the Recreation Program, Community Resources and Special Facilities, Athletics, Therapeutics, Aquatics, and Special Populations Advisory Committee, Mr. Benson. Yeah, we had a uh, joint meeting on September 13th. I'm going to call uh, Debbie up to uh, speak to the uh, new business, and then we're going to need uh, a motion to approve. Debbie. 
Thank you, commissioners. Uh, what we're requesting, uh, Z-Fest is happening again this, this year in Zachary. Uh, Breck, for the first time last year, participated. Uh, we felt that it was a very, very successful event. It had a great crowd out there, great family environment for us. So we have every uh, anticipation to being able to get out there again. And uh, Breck's role mainly is um, not only provide the facility at the Zachary Community Park, but also the Recreation Department, uh, along with outdoors and everything else, we present the Children's Village, uh, you know, as part of the activity. So it's, it's really a great, great event for Breck, great exposure. Uh, but tonight, uh, we have uh, the Zachary Chamber of Commerce. We have a couple of representatives here uh, requesting permission for um, the, to serve and sell, sell beer at the event, which they did last year. It was on a separate facility. It was on the... Uh, Zachary Sports uh, Park that uh, joins with uh, Brex uh, Community Park. Uh, this year they're requesting actually to hold the entire event at our community park. Um, so we have uh, Mr. Jason St. Romain and, uh, with the Zachary uh, Chamber of Commerce and Ms. Megan Andrews if you have any questions regarding their request. Any questions? Okay. Motion to approve. Yeah, you know, uh, you know uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioners and, and Madam Superintendent, really I'm glad that we're getting a chance to do more things like this. It really is. It's, it's a pleasure to get a chance to work with uh, the Chamber and Zachary. Um, you know, we, we have a commitment to the whole parish, and it's really uh, it's a, it's a great thing that we get a chance to do more things um, where we include the whole parish. And so I know it's in Zachary, but I hope uh, a lot of people get a chance to go out there and attend. It's a, it's a great event. It's a huge uh, event, and uh, we hope to help further it and make it better every year. Do we have any opposition? With no opposition. Thank you. They would Thank you. like for them to come and introduce themselves. I'm Jason St. Romain. I'm the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors President uh, this year. So we've, uh, I'd like to thank y'all for allowing the use of the park. We had, a, we had a very good festival last year. Appreciate it. I'm Megan Andrews. Actually worked with Breck for several years. And now I have my own company, which is the LLC, putting on the event for the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that it? <coughs> okay. I'm the parish councilman from that area, and I, I've, I've attended, and it's gotten bigger and bigger every year, and y'all's partnership is going to make it even better. So thank you very much for y'all's consideration in allowing us to do this. Council, councilman, and they are, we didn't know they are going to double up on the law enforcement. Absolutely. I mean, that, that what they do is, let me tell you, last year was a great success, and, and absolutely there was no problems at all and, and through that entire time. So... It was an ex it was an excellent thing. It's a family thing oriented deal. It's it's a wonderful time. It really is. So we look forward to doing it again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. We don't have any special orders, but we do have unfinished business and general orders. Um, this resolution was introduced August in the August commission meeting. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. This uh, resolution was uh, introduced in the August committee meeting. And right now, we'll hold a public hearing to, and adopt the resolution authorizing and providing of the issuance not exceed $3 million um, limited ad tax revenue bonds, series 2012B, for the recreation of the Recreation and Park Commission of <coughs> Baton Rouge Parish for the purpose of providing <coughs> funds to purchase, acquire, construct, develop, improve, operate, and maintain public parks, playgrounds, and recreational properties and facilities of the Recreation and Park Commission of the Parish of East Baton Rouge within the Parish of East Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and acquire the necessary furnish furnishing machinery and equipment, therefore authorizing the making of the application to the State Board Commission for consent and authority to use the Series 2012 bond of the Recreation and Park Commission for the Parish of East Baton Rouge, authorizing the execution and delivery of any and all other documents required in connection with the issuance of the Series 2012B bonds and providing 
providing for the matters related thereto. This public hearing is open. Is anyone like to speak? The public hearing is closed. I'm just curious regarding the uh, plans for to improve, operate, and maintain public parks. Is there a particular plan in place for different parks, or is it just uh, in gen for general maintenance and operation? This is a fun. This is the funding source for the IYC plan that Ted talked about earlier. Um, that was done as part of the strategic plan in 2004. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is really not it's for. Part of the IYC plan. Gotcha. So it's not really for the current updating, looking at the park, saying, okay, we're going to go back there and improve, paint, uh, do whatever. In the it's, park. it's all out part of the IYC plan. It's for the specific park plan. That's where the thirteen million will be spent. Yeah, this is our funding source for for this program. Mm -hmm. And just for your edification, um, J.P. Chase Morgan is the one won the bid on that, and it's at 2.13%. And for the record, it, it, I think you may have said $3 million. It's $13 million. I, just, I said thir three, I'm sorry. Okay. Just for the record. $13 million. I move we accept. We have a, we have a second by Mr. Freeman. Um, can we get a roll call vote? Ms. Chris? Thank you, baby. It's a lot. It's a big difference. It's a lot of us. <laughs> I couldn't get much done this week. <laughs> Mr. Osbury is absent. Mr. Benson. Yay. Mr. Freeman. Yay. Mr. Guillory. Yay. Ms. Jackson. Yes. Mr. Riche is absent. Mr. Sam is absent. Mr. Selders. Yes. Mr. Taylor is absent. Mr. Quor uh, Mr. Chairman, it's 5-0 in favor. They accept the resolution. All right, now we have new business, and this is to introduce the supplemental bond resolution amending and supplementing the general bond resolution adopted by the Board of Commissioners for the Recreation and Park Commission of East Baton, of Parish of East Baton Rouge on February 22, 2005, and authorizing and providing for the issuance, issuance of the limited ad valorem tax revenue bond series 2012B of the Recreation and Park Commission for the Parish of East Baton Rouge for the purpose of providing funds to purchase, acquire, construct, develop, improve, operate, and maintain public parks, playgrounds, and recreational properties and facility. Okay, I'm sorry. And the facilities of the user within, user within the Parish of East Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and acquire the necessary furnishing machinery and equipment Therefore, secured by and payable from the uh, payable from the ad valorem tax approved by the voters of the Parish of East Baton Rouge, Louisiana, November second, two thousand and four, providing for the sale of the series two thousand twelve bond B's, prescribing for the form fixing and details, providing for the payment of principal of the interest and the interest of the two thousand twelve bonds, for the rights of the registered owners thereof and providing other matters in connection therewith, set the public hearing for the regular commission meeting on October 25, 2012 at the Breck Administration Office in Womack Park, 6201 6 Florida Boulevard, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Okay, I need a motion to approve. So yeah. Mr. Freeman gives a motion. Mr. Benson seconds it. So we adopt it. Anybody, I'm sorry, anyone on a, opposed? With no opposition, we adopt it. This is approved. We have some adjustments we need to provide to you to make sure that we are following all of the proper guidelines regarding uh, issuance of this bond program. 
um, commission. It seems that I left an ordinance off the agenda, the approval of the $8 million ordinance for the loan. We'll need a consent to consider. To do this, can we add it to the agenda now? Yes. This is Richard Lieberwitz, our legal counsel. He's with um, for Hill Saxon Lane. Uh, we can add it to the agenda now. Yeah, I think the board's got to uh, authorize you adding it, but you certainly can. Right. And uh, do we no need to hold a public hearing at this time? You do. So we have two things. We need to first add this item to the agenda, and second, then we have to hold a public hearing. Okay. And then we can move forward. Thank okay. You. Any other questions? I move that we add this item to the agenda. Okay. Any opposition? If no opposition, we move it to the okay. agenda. Now we can okay. All right, now we have a public hearing. Anybody want to say anything? Okay. An ordinance authorizing the borrowing by the Recreation and Park Commission for the East Baton Rouge, for the parish of East Baton Rouge should not exceed $8 million, providing for the payment thereof, establishing the rate interest thereon, providing for a pledge of revenues of the Recreation and Park Commission for the parish of East Baton Rouge for the security and payment thereof in principal and interest, providing for other matters in connection therewith. This is our revenue anticipation note that we do every year. Um, we're asking again for $8 million. That's been the amount for the last several years. We received um, um, a bid from Whitney Bank here um, at 0.74%. The motion, Mr. Freeman gives the motion. I so move. And Mr. Gillard seconds it. Any opposition? Okay, you're going to need to do a roll call. Okay, roll call. You do a roll call vote. Chris? Mr. Osbury is absent. Mr. Benson? Yay. Mr. Freeman? Yay. Mr. Gillery? Yay. Ms. Jackson? Yes. Mr. Riche is absent. Mr. Sam is absent. Mr. Selders? Yay. Mr. Taylor is absent. Mr. Chairman, 5-0, the motion passes. Any, any other business? That's it. Any comments? Meeting adjourned. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. Adjourn.